Rebels fighting the army in the north of the country, so they've taken over control of the ancient town of Timbuktu. Now, that marks a significant gain for the rebels in their push for territory. It comes on the back of gains for them in the towns of Kidal and then yesterday in Gao. Well, earlier, Franz Van Katz spoke to the mayor of Timbuktu. He told us that the rebels had taken over control of the town easily with little violence. There was no opposition. No shots were fired and no one was worried. Nothing happened. Peacefully, peacefully, at least in regard to the rebels, they did not harm anyone. There were a few outbursts from young hoodlums who were overexcited, but that was the only regrettable incident upon their entry. And meanwhile, in the Malian capital, the military junta, which carried out a coup d'etat last week, has pledged to return power to civilian rule, although details of that remain unclear. They've been coming under intense international pressure to return the country to democratic rule. Well, for more now on the situation in Mali, we're joined on the line by Professor Douglas Yates, Africa specialist at the American University of Paris. Professor Yates, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, now, the rebels have gained ground very quickly in the north of Mali, uh, taking the towns of Kidal, Gao and now Timbuktu. How significant for them is gaining these towns? Well, they seem to have at least temporarily accomplished their military objective. Um, the Tuaregs want recognition. They also want a share of some of the mineral rents, but some of them want their own state, Azawad. And this movement seems to have accomplished the first goal towards statehood, which is conquering the territory. But it would be very difficult for them to turn this into a legally recognized claim. Right now, there's a power vacuum. Uh, the president has been overthrown. The military uh, claims that it doesn't have what it needs to fight. And Mali seems to be surrounded by neighbors who, for the moment, have cut them off. So for the short term, Mali seems to have lost the territory. But under international law, this is a rebellion. Mali is the recognized state. And with allies like the United States and the European Union, I don't think it would be difficult for them to get back that territory. Now, the uh, Tuareg rebellion is clearly making the most of the chaos right now after the recent military coup in Mali, but it's been brewing for some time in the north of Mali, hasn't it? Yeah, the Tuareg are a nomadic people, and they only make up about 10% of the population, but they cover two-thirds of the territory. The French were never able to assimilate these people. They've always ignored the colonial borders. They're pastoralists. And uh, they've already rebelled many times before. But here's their weakness. They're a tribal society, and thus they're not united. So uh, what we've seen now is uh, probably an ideal situation for them to negotiate for autonomy. That's what they've been demanding for a long time, a referendum on the question perhaps of some kind of federal relation. Um, Colonel Gaddafi's regime falling has obviously played a role in many of these fighters returning. But uh, poverty's pushed them into crime, smuggling, and it's clear that with al-Qaeda, the Islamic Maghreb, being an official enemy of the West, this Tuareg state would have a very difficult okay. time sustaining itself. OK, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, indeed, though, Professor Douglas Yates of the American University of Paris. Uh, well, that's all we've got time for uh, for this bulletin. Uh, do stay tuned to France Van